Pokemon. In Pokemon, I used my Master Ball immediately. Why? And then when I had to catch Mewtwo, I Why did you was in total panic forever because I was a kid and I was a moron. And I was like at my friend's house almost crying because I didn't think I was going to get Do you Mewtwo. remember what you used the Master Ball on? No. Probably oh, not. Probably like, an like a Butterfree or something. It was probably, probably something stupid like a Scyther or something like that. Or yeah. It was See, bad. This is what I feel like when you guys talk about sports. <laughs> I just don't know what a Master Ball yeah, is. Yeah, I used That's... my Master Ball on Wayne Gretzky just so I can make sure neither of you understand this conversation. <laughs> oh All right, what is going on, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. This week, we've got a, a whole bunch of a variety of stuff to talk about. We're going to talk about Twitter one last time because they're changing their name. I guess we'll still refer to it as Twitter this time, even though there's still this time. references of Twitter all over it still. I want to refer to it as Twitter for the rest of time. I probably will still keep doing that. Until it's gone. Uh, we're also going to talk about some tech that we've been enjoying lately. And I want to talk about uh, a little bit of a topic that Linus actually made a video about and sort of expand on it. Uh, and I think that's actually where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with everyone should watch Linus's, one of his recent new videos, which was about, let me look up the exact title, because it was pretty I think it was called good. Base Models Are a Lie or something. Yeah, like The Biggest Lie in Tech or something mm -hmm. like that. Let me find the exact. Okay, starting at is The Biggest Lie in Tech. Oh, fair. So like, yeah, base models, you think of like the starting at $200, but there's also much higher specs available, that type of thing is The Biggest Lie in Tech. And uh, I went into it thinking he was going to talk about certain things. And he talked about mostly computers. And I think that's what the focus was. The thumbnail was him holding a laptop. But I wanted to, like, j expand on that a little more because I feel like there's so I, when I watched that video, I just thought, like, oh, that's different in different um, product categories. So in computers, which is what his video is about, he is 100 percent right. Mm. Like the base product, the base product is usually bad. And the starting yeah. at price is basically just advertising. Yeah. No one actually buys anything at that starting price. Pixel most people slate. Don't. <laughs> yeah. Pixel I, slate. Yeah. Yeah. We reviewed, really? The Celeron Pixel Slate. We so reviewed you could it. Say, they took it off the market because it was so bad. It's like exactly. the sacrificial product that lets them have better advertising. Which yeah. is weird because it's usually the worst version of the product. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it's not like, usually it's not Pixel Slate bad. Usually it's just decent enough to qualify but <laughs> yeah. then the upper the better specs the ones you should usually really get mm -hmm. yeah. in the computer world it's it's more obvious than ever because like say take a laptop for example you have a laptop that says starting at 599 but it'll have only four gigs of ram and only 128 gigs of storage and it's like well obviously i'm going to be upgrading those things i don't think you should buy a laptop these days with only those things yeah and then laptops these days are less upgradable than ever before, especially if you focus on Apple like he did. You get a laptop that is basically stuck at its exact spec, no upgradable storage, no upgradable RAM forever. So you really are definitely not getting the base spec. So the starting at price kind of feels like a lie because you're never really getting that. Um, but then I thought about other product categories and the other two that came to my mind maybe there's others that came to your mind when hearing about this is smartphones and cars in cars it is a complete lie yeah <laughs> you yeah. basically can't unless you're going direct to consumer you basically can't get a base price car they'll always have the, the commercial that says well equipped starting at you know 29.999 but the 29.999 is is not a real car that you can get is well equipped different than Starting at yeah, they'll say that well is a little in different. In the 30s, but starting at 20. I mean, that's their version of well equipped. That's a whole, that's a different way well, to like yeah. slide you in there, I guess. Probably because base model is impossible to get yeah. there. Like, you know, maybe we should stop saying this, but just even base model, if you get like the, the whatever, like a Rav Four at base. A lot of times in different places, they'll have all these packages that are on top of the car, and you're like, oh, I don't want that, and they're like. It's on the car already. I don't know what you're you at want the dealership. The all weather package. Or, yeah, yeah. And also, like a lot of the base versions are missing, like many things you would obviously want in a car. I was gonna see that that say that sounds kind of like a slight too to say well equipped at this price. It's like our yeah. base model sucks. <laughs> That's exactly what they're saying. Our base model is not well equipped. Yeah, it they can have say a radio. that. Yeah. It doesn't have it doesn't heated have anything. Radio. But you can say that when you can never buy the base model. Like That's they true. can be like. Yeah, that those ones you don't want to buy. Also, they're not available in our parking lot right now. Like yeah. so 
you don't get it. Yeah, it's all about which ones they can sell off the lot, and mm. uh, they're they're trying to sell things with higher margins, and they don't really want to sell the mm. cheapest possible version, mm -hmm. uh, which is often not a good product anyway. But then in smartphones, though, in smartphones, I think most a lot of people actually do buy the base yeah. model. Mm -hmm. And that's fine because most people weren't thinking they're going to upgrade their phone at any point down the line. So they're getting whatever, the 128 gig version. If they need some storage, they can pay for that. But a lot of people are cool with the 128 gig base model of whatever phone they just bought. And that's totally fine too. Mm -hmm. So I think that's actually, it, it, it's different in different parts of tech. There is, sure. I feel like I can almost make the argument that in smartphones, it almost changes a little bit though, because the one of the first things I did think of was the Poco phone. And I feel like when you're getting into these cheaper budget phones, they are kind of doing this weird thing of like, we've seen Xiaomi a couple times do the like, this is the $79 phone that only 200 of you can get. And then it turns yeah. into 150, which and that's is almost worse. It's worse. Yeah. But it is different. And like the Poco phone, when it first came out, the uh, um, it was like, this is the $300 phone, but 99% of people reviewing it reviewed that like $450 mm -hmm. version no, a, that was cooler, yeah, yeah. which is just like... So I have notes so, on other versions of this. Yeah. That, that's one of them where it's like we... Most people will hear that this phone starts at $299, but every single person reviewing it is reviewing a more expensive version of it. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that happened with the Poco phone that usually happens with computers. They don't ship the base version to reviewers. And then yeah. the other version is when you see the the lineup on the on the website of like all the different specs it's capable of. I think like take a Razer laptop for example that you can get like a 120 hertz display or a 4K display, and then it's capable of like up to 12 hours of battery if you have the worst display. They will list up to 4K <laughs> display and up to 12 hours of battery oh, next yeah. to each other as if you can get a machine with both those things, but yeah. that doesn't exist. Totally. That's another thing that happens all the time that drives me crazy. Yeah. So as a reviewer, I try to say how much the thing I'm reviewing costs and sort of evaluate different pricing tiers and should you get the base version? Should you get the version I reviewed somewhere in between? Here's what you should upgrade. But yeah, those two things drive me crazy. Yeah, I want to step back on the, on the laptop or computer versus smartphone thing again. Um, I had a I have a wild story with okay. my sister, and I think I told you guys this when the M1 or possibly M2 Mac Mini was out, or I guess Mac M1. They there was like this deal where you could get the second storage tier, the 256 gigabyte option, which also came with a little bit more RAM, I think, for like fifty dollars more. Mm -hmm. And it came that deal came out two days after my sister bought the base model. And so I was like, I messaged her and I said, if you can, you should return yours and get this for $50 more. And she was like, why? And I was like, because Be you're going to have this spec forever. It's twice the storage. And she was like, what do I need storage for? And I was like, wow, there's so many people that I think it's hard for us to see outside of this because I cannot imagine having a laptop with oh. 128 gigs of storage. Yeah. We like make videos and it's like, two terabytes for a project i'm like importing footage right now I was like, but that was a laptop gigs. right no that was mac the, the mac, mac mini. mini okay sorry and then so okay. it like, depends on what she's gonna what people are gonna do yeah. like that with yeah. that computer right so the 128 gig version exists and theoretically there's a non-zero number of people who are totally fine with i that. think there's a lot of people that are totally fine with that yeah like but, if you look at the imac like the all-in-one imac mm -hmm. i would bet you that most people bought the absolute base model and that's that's why they didn't upgrade from m1 to m2 yeah I think when you look at what Apple sells in the stores too, like if you go to apple.com and go to like pickup and you spec something out, especially like a custom computer with certain RAM and certain storage, you'll always see a longer lead time for anything that's not the base model. Yeah. But if you spec a base model, it's like, yeah, we got these Instantly. in the stores. The opposite of the of car these. lot. Yeah. yeah, it's exactly the yeah, opposite. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also that that would be my argument for why higher end smartphones make sense to buy base models because like most of us have cloud storage and stuff like that. We're not storing a million things on our phone. So, so like yeah. 64 still feels kind of low, but I think a lot of base models now come with 128. Yes. And like, that's totally reasonable for a phone. And a lot of times phones, you're not cheap. Obviously there's some outliers, but you're mostly just upgrading the storage for like a non-base model. That's pretty and much. That's thing, yeah. totally fine. Like a base yeah. model is a great, a great price. Yeah, for it's a interesting. Lot of you don't really see phones where you're just like, well, this model is 60 hertz, and if you get more storage, you also get 120 yeah. hertz. You have to go to the pro. Okay, that's it. That's interesting because it's it's different phrasing. It's kind of the same thing. Like if you just want to buy the iPhone, 
the base model is just the iPhone 14, and then you can buy the 120 hertz model, but that comes with more storage and different materials and stuff, right. and a different name. Right. But it is kind of like the base model but iPhone. It, but the then it's like one. a different size, and you have different right. camera it comes bumps. with a bunch of. It comes with an extra camera. It comes with a bigger, higher refresh rate screen. Those, I would say, most of the companies are usually pretty good at differentiating that. But when you come to like carriers in the U.S., I was gonna yeah. say it before with like Samsung, it'll be like. Get the S23 starting at, and it's the like regular Base, S23 price. Yeah. But when you're looking at that, like that guy's probably going to sell you on like the S23 Ultra that yeah. now is at least the plus seven hundred more dollars. When or something. you think about it, that's really smart from Apple to make the regular iPhone 14 the exact same size as the 14 Pro, right. because then sure you're getting a worse screen. But like every other company, if you get the Pro, the screen's bigger, yeah. and that like sucks for a lot of people that don't want uh, massive phones. ROG phone. What about, what? <laughs> There's a couple ROG phone oh. specs. They're all the same size, but the Pro is well. Like a that nicer that thing. phone is probably the most computer-like phone. Yeah, yeah adjacent. Is. is that like his laptop adjacent? Yeah. Almost? Where when you upgrade the specs, you actually do get an overclock CPU and extra you get RAM. Extra RAM, which yeah. nobody really cares about in phones anymore. You don't need 24 gigs of RAM on your on your phone. Yeah, <laughs> that seems like something everyone should have. Yeah, but it is it is actually pretty wild that um, like people don't really need 128 gigs of storage on their phones. Yeah, I don't think so. Do you know how much storage you use on your phone right now? I could... Well, I just started using the Pixel 4. Oh. I could I could look at my iPhone. Let me look I am, at my iPhone. I, I checked recently. I'm at like 212 gigs on my iPhone, so I could not do the base. 212? Yeah, I could not do the 128. And again, you don't that's think you could mostly, make room? Uh, if I didn't... So when I fly, I listen to music, and it's all offline downloaded already. Yeah, so same. if I blasted my whole Spotify library, I could probably get under under 128, but I don't want to. I'm currently using 158 gigs. So you couldn't use the 128? Yeah. I mean, if you really wanted to delete a ton of stuff, but, but that's, yeah. that's no. sacrifice. I would get the second, but honestly, yeah, it's because I download a ton of YouTube videos. I'm looking at the biggest storage things. Mm -hmm. I have 36 gigs of YouTube videos downloaded. Jesus. Uh, yeah. That's a that's, lot. E that's easy to clean, I, though. I that's so easy to it's clean. It's easy to clean. Yeah. I fly yeah. a lot, and I download, like, 30 videos I do that. I, I download them on the runway, and I, like, hold my phone up to the window and, like, download yeah, six you YouTube videos. Yeah. You gotta just plan an hour more ahead, and yeah. it's so much easier than to, like, please download before this takes off. Yeah. Second is podcasts. I have 23 gigs. Wow. And then that's Lightroom. Lightroom, I only have 12 gigs, which is surprising. I feel like most people have, like, their photos and videos are the most. I have huge files because I transfer full camera images yeah. to my phone. Phones. And yeah. I, I usually edit photos on my phone because I know that that's exactly how people are going to see it. Sure. Yeah, so, true. yeah. I could do one. I have 113 gigs used. So 41 are in apps somehow. Don't take any more 4K videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, but it is, it is crazy. I, I mean, could clean this pretty easy. Remember the time when um, everyone had the 8 gigabyte iPhone? And people were like running into storage issues all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like my mom would only ever upgrade her phone because she couldn't take any more pictures. I, I'm pretty sure that that's the number one way, way that people run out of storage. Because yeah, other than that, like it, unless you download a bunch of offline files, whether it's music or movies or whatever, yeah, that's going to be your biggest files. Yeah, like if you have an iPhone Pro and you just turn on ProRes by accident and shoot a bunch of 4K ProRes, like you're gonna cruise through a couple hundred gigs. If you want to be really tinfoil hat, you could just be like, well. They're making these super high resolution 100 megapixel sensors now on phones because mm. the storage is way higher. And then yeah. you have to buy the higher tier yeah. or the better cloud storage. I think yeah, they do yeah, a good yeah. job of like binning it down. Like, yeah, they're not actually. I doing think they that. know the numbers sell and like you can. Like, you can buy, uh, the Pixel has a 48 megapixel camera, but you literally can't shoot 48 yeah, megapixel 12, images yeah. with, like, all bins down. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're, they're trying to give us a good experience, I think, at the end of the day. So ideally, you know, yeah. compression. It, it is, I just want to say one more time, I would never buy a computer with 128 gigabytes of storage. No. But talking to my sister, I'm realizing how many people would. That I also agree on. Yeah. I think you're totally right with like the iMac. I mean, think of like Chromebooks also. Like yeah. a lot of people, the reason they buy Chromebooks is because they know all they have to do is really look on the internet and yeah. do stuff. So like, why browse. do you need storage to browse the internet yeah. and watch streaming? Okay, so a question for everyone. Uh -huh. Is there a piece of tech that you think you could be totally fine living a lifetime with the base version of? Yes, it's called the iPhone 12 mini and I've been doing it for years. <laughs> do you have the base base okay. model? Base base. 64 Is gigs. that 64? Six, 64 gigs, Holy baby. Oh, that's Holy. cutting it close. Are you close to the top of 64 or not? I was until I updated to the iOS 17 beta, right. which somehow wiped 
20 gigabytes of system files off of my phone. If it works, it works. Wait, um, wipes them off? Yeah, like before... Just make some space. I'm I'd waiting for him to find out. It's out the very important stuff. I had been like juggling, you know, my last six gigs for like a year. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and things were starting to like not work. Like no, nothing involving my voice worked. Like voice to text didn't work. Siri would never even load. Like it forget just it. Just offloaded it. the models. It was like I can't. There's I, no more storage. I guess so. But huh. with the beta and all of my new space, Impressive. she lives. I also, see... also, I just want to say this is. I was talking to Hayato, but this is maybe unrelated, so maybe it won't make it. But I accidentally slammed a glass bottle down on the screen of this phone. And the glass bottle broke. <laughs> Didn't Meaning just, that the iPhone is ceramic tough, man. shield. Baby. Didn't we just talk last episode about a bottle hitting your phone and it denting the bottle? bottle yeah, dented the pixel. The pixel oh, fold right. dented the metal. Yeah. That's, wow. Yeah. Phones yeah, are tough. Dang. Phones can beat drinks pretty easy. I will say a ton of people buy the base model AirPods. Like even the old AirPods with the long stem. I see so many people that still oh. have those. Like, I actually see way more of those than AirPods Pro. Are they the yeah. base or are they the USB-C ones? There aren't any USB-C ones, right? Yeah, or, sorry, cool. Lightning. I meant I f- that up. Wah, well, wah. the old base ones were a headphone jack. If oh, that's where oh, we're going. I, wait, you mean that? Ear- Just cut all of this out. <laughs> cut all of this out. I don't know if I, I would consider AirPods base model because you can't upgrade. Those are ear... Pods, I thought. No, AirPods. Or what are Air- the wireless AirPods? We're not talking about AirPods. I wouldn't say that's a base model Wait, though, because you can't upgrade that version. You could just yeah. get a better headphone. But oh, you're saying like the no. Gen One? Like there's AirPods and AirPods Pro. Yeah. And oh. AirPods are one thing, the base model, and then the you can upgrade to noise cancellation, and now you have. But AirPods they're also Pro. a different shape. But it's a totally different product. But you could make that same argument for like. A regular phone versus a pro phone, right? Oh, interesting. How many parts of the boat do I have to take off to make yeah, it but the boat? Well, no, I think the pro Ship phone, there's still a base yeah. model of a pro phone. I think that, well... But it's not the pro phone. Yeah, those pro are phone. two different models. Well, what? Yeah. So do you think yeah. the, uh, the, the iPhone example, where you have the iPhone 14, iPhone 14 Plus, iPhone 14 Pro, and iPhone 14 Pro Max... All of them have a base model. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Okay. You're right. That's true. That's right. But I think also when you walk in the store, a lot of people go, what's the new yes. iPhone? Yeah. And, and they, they end the up with the base one. model I 14. I feel like yeah. you mentioned that before as like the step out of the base model as like to thinking of it as a bigger picture. But yeah. I would still consider, and I think most of our listeners would consider each of those having a base model. And it's just storage. I think yeah, the same thing basically. happens with AirPods. Like people walk into the store and they just say, I want I agree. AirPods. Yeah. And they buy the cheapest AirPods. I agree. Yeah. It's maybe not technically right but i think that's how people think about it and people yeah. do that yeah we're yeah. getting into semantics it sounds exactly. great i know people listening to this podcast are like that sounds insane what do you mean you just walk in and say iphone but when you no, go I to a store and it. listen you're like yeah. oh my god they're just asking for the iphone yeah and they have nothing else to say yeah it's crazy uh-huh it's it's crazy sometimes yeah do you well, have a base model adam that you I could have. live oh, yeah. with What's the your... phone phone i phone. live on base models all the time because cloud storage is a thing yeah 128 <clears throat> Less than that, I've done in the past. So. 32. No. <laughs> <laughs> I also got to say, something that hurts is when you're trading in phones, less and less they ask for the storage that you're training in. So it's like, really? Y- on Apple at least, does not ask for the storage tier. So you get the huh. same amount for a 512 gigabyte iPhone 14 Pro than you'll get for and a Well, here's the dirty little secret. It doesn't cost them a lot to <laughs> add more memory. This they can charge you for it. This was the crux of Linus's video. <laughs> oh, really? In case you haven't watched it, I mean, you should watch this video. It's really good. And it's a learning experience. But that's the number one thing that he talks about in his video is the amount that someone like Apple charges for eight more gigs right. of built-in storage versus the amount of extra cost there is to Apple is a, it's like a 300% plus markup every time. I will say that's very different than it used to be because I remember buying my um, my first iPod and it was like the option between like eight and 16 gigabytes of storage. And back then, storage was really expensive. Mm. They still upsold you on it, but it wasn't like today where like, like memory is 
the cheapest possible component. Yeah, I just think it, it has definitely stratified over time. I remember specking my computer back in the day when I built my HP Pavilion DV7T on HP's website. Old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it was like going from... Grabs. So when you went from four to eight gigs of RAM, you went from 32 to 64-bit Windows. And I remember looking at that and then looking at other computers like that you could buy and how much they charge for an extra four gigs of RAM. And it was very consistent across the board. And now it's like... If you go to Apple, it's literally like two hundred more dollars mm. to bump up your RAM. Which yeah, is, that's watch Linus's video, but that's the main point of it. Is storage yeah. is the highest margin thing. Do you guys have any base model things that you can live with? Yeah, I think I would be able to live with a base model Rivian R one T if given the chance. <laughs> that's not the base. <laughs> I think I could live with the base. Oh, one. the dual. You mean the new dual motor one? Whatever the cheapest. The base one. model Rivian base R1T model is just a gas truck. <laughs> <laughs> that the R1T want, now then. has, they're now shipping the dual motor version. Yeah. So there's the quad motor launch edition and then there's the base model. But those, I think when you look at like Rivian and even Tesla, there's so few specs that they're kind of all very similar to the base, base model, version. baby. Base model is great. I'd be fine with one. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. I'd say my car, I could do the base version. Of the, the plaid. Of the plaid. Oh, yeah. Plat. Oh, <laughs> oh, the the yeah, long I range Model S. The long range Model S is a oh, base version. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. The fact that it's long range. Do you get a wheel or a yoke? You get a yoke still. Oh. Yeah. You can option a wheel, Did, I believe. Or it might be, ba- it might be vice versa. I think it's a wheel now and you can option a Sounds yoke. Sounds like the base model is better. Well, that's the question. Yeah. <laughs> is, <laughs> I guess that question becomes is the Model S the base model or is the Model 3 the base model? Yeah. I think the Model S is the different model. from the Model I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. All of the base models are fine. Yeah. The they model used to have S a really that's... bad base model. Model S is the Model 3 Pro. <laughs> Imagine if they called it that. That's the person who just walks in and goes, I would like a Tesla. Which yeah. one? <laughs> oh, yeah. So the, I would like a car. The please. Model Y is the Model 3 Plus. Yes. And, the, and the S is the Model <laughs> it's 3 Pro. It's got more storage. And then the X yeah. is the Pro Max. It all that's works. That's true. It all works out. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I would like a car, please. Here you go. Yeah. Here's a Model 3. Um, it's hard for me to figure that out. I'll have to do more thinking on that because my entire life basically has been very much like if I cannot afford the version of it I want, I will just wait. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not bad about needing to save up more money to you eventually also don't buy the better buy one. Things though, I also do not buy things <laughs> almost well, ever. I guess then the question for you spans to like, what upgrade isn't like. Yeah, what are you just okay with on it? It just doesn't matter to you. Not that you're saving money. It's oh. just because you don't care about generally that, like think. clothes. <laughs> well, it's just, I didn't mean in general. Shoes. I meant, <laughs> I'm thinking like in tech, is there an unnecessary upgrade that you make anyway? Like you don't care about. Like you're not going to spend money because you, I get what you mean by you want to spend money for the thing you want. But yeah. is there something you're not going to also spend an extra two hundred dollars to upgrade something if you don't care about that? Right. Upgrade. So yeah, is totally. there something which I'm sure yeah. you'd have to think about? For I'd a while, have to think yeah. about yeah. it. Like pretty much every upgrade we make is because we really want, want it. Want yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we're spending extra money to get it. I think that's yeah. a good thing to live by. Also, like if you want something that's expensive and you really want something that right then you can't afford, it's way better just to wait. just wait and save up for it, because yeah. then when you buy the cheaper version, you're just going to be sad it. with the thing you spent a yeah. ton of money on, yeah. and then that sucks. That's a lesson I learned from my mom when I was like nine. Yeah. Because I wanted a toy, and I bought the cheap version, and it broke within like a week. And she was like, see? Yeah. Had you just Let's waited another happens. two weeks of allowance? You deserved it. See Kid happens. Adam deserved that. Let me tell and now her, I have trauma. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me tell a really quick existential story. Okay. Existential story. <laughs> how this yeah. How can... <laughs> when I was in fourth and fifth grade. Um, we had every week we would get points, uh, at the end of the week if we didn't like get in trouble, right. And have our card moved or whatever. Classic fifth grade. And on Friday afternoons, uh, we'd watch a movie and you could either spend some of your points. I think we'd get a hundred points a week and it was like 50 points for a candy. So you could buy two candies or you could only spend half of them or you could spend none of them. And at the end of the year, we had an auction where everyone had to bring in something from like the thrift store or something. And we would like have an auction to teach people kids how auctions worked Hmm. but fourth and fifth grade we had the same teacher so you could keep your points over into the next year if you wanted dude i'd be saving this is confused this is a good life lesson Thirty thousand points at the end of fifth grade like what am i getting (laughs) i'm just imagining to cash this in for a tesla (laughs) yeah Yeah, i'm imagining (laughs) fourth graders at a thrift shop buying things for no so literally i didn't spend a single point for two years because i was like i'm gonna go to that last auction i'm gonna get whatever the crap i want yes, right that's me so that's what i did um but about it, the school it <laughs> i ended up buying like a pda that i didn't use and then throwing it away <laughs> that's the most david answer. 
<laughs> of course we did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but the interesting life lesson in that is that I did have to think about like, huh, it is worth like having small amounts of happiness throughout your life, right? Like maybe I should have gotten some candy every now and then mm-hmm. because I felt extremely powerful going into that last auction, mm-hmm. but I felt really empty when I bought the PDA. <laughs> yeah, the PDA <laughs> okay. tasted disgusting. Okay. And... I have a theory. This is a theory. I love that story because it reminds me of I have a theory that there are basically two types of like video game players. If you're playing a first person game, you know, you can kind of like go through the game and upgrade little bits as you get more VC or whatever. You right. Like, oh, I got enough for the thing. I'll buy something. Oh, I got enough for something new. I'll buy something every single time. And then there's the other person who's like, I'm going to get as far into this game as I possibly can without upgrading a single thing. Yeah. And I'm going to go to the absolute limit of this character. Then I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to dominate and yeah. I'm going to buy a ton of stuff yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to crush this level yeah. and I'm going to go 40 more levels with this exact setup. Right. Grind super early. That well, is yeah, my I think setup. And there's just roll through the game. The other version of that is like do you play the game straight through the story mode and do all the bosses at like the lowest level of XP or do right. you do every single side quest so you just walk up to the last boss and like one shot like it smack and then, him in the face yeah because yeah. you have I, so much like so many stats. i like saving it i get some i get some value out of like saving it so like if i can save two more weeks of allowance and get eight gigs of ram on the laptop i'm doing it yeah but, there was a time in pokemon gold where i upgrade or i evolved my cyndaquil into a typhlosion before i even left the first town so i just rolled up to the gym leader who had a level six okay. gen one only T- what Gold I've, is amazing. Gold anyway, is amazing. Best game. I had a level 36 Pokemon and destroyed their le- the gym leader's level 6 Pokemon. And it's all- really fun. <laughs> In NBA 2K, there's you, there's a storyline. of it's, it's probably similar to Pokemon, but yeah. literally, like, you go through college basketball, and then you go through early, like, overseas pro leagues to trying oh. to get scouted and you like you try to get as far as you can without upgrading any of your <laughs> skills and you're just like a bum on the court and you can barely <laughs> score but you're barely holding on and then you get to a cutscene where it's like sorry son you're not good enough to start oh and you're like God. wow I, I need to get better then you go to the store <laughs> and you buy all the skills and you max everything out and you come back and you just are a god on the court, but and it's so fun. I always feel like it's gonna feel better than it does. Like, when I destroyed that level 6 Pokemon with my level 36 Typhlosion, I was expecting it to feel amazing, and I was just like, this feels kind of empty. I can, Pokemon needs better. I can tell you why the other side sucks. That's strength animation. In Pokemon, I use my Master Ball immediately. Why? And then when I had to catch Mewtwo, I why did you was in total panic forever. Because I was a kid and I was a moron. And I was like at my friend's house almost crying because I didn't think I was going to get Mewtwo. Do you Mewtwo. remember what you used the Master Ball on? No. Probably oh, not. Probably like, an like a Butterfree or something. It was probably, probably something stupid like a Scyther or something like that. Or yeah. It was See, that. this is what I feel like when you guys talk about sports. <laughs> I just don't know what a master ball yeah, is. Yeah, I used my master ball on Wayne Gretzky just so I can make sure neither of you understand this conversation. Oh <laughs> anyway, we're pretty off the rails. Yeah, I think it's probably break time, time for an ad break. Anyway, take the base model as far as you can and then uh, spend what you think it's worth. Use your master ball on Use YouTube. your master ball on the first level. <laughs> Trivia time. <laughs> All right. So according to Motor One... What was the best-selling car of Q1 2023? Oh, I know the answer. I think I know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. In nice. the U.S.? In world? the world. In the world. Oh, I, do, I know the answer. Worldwide. Yeah. There's an article about this. Actually. Yeah. I don't. I love this question. Me too. Ah! 20 Club. <laughs> I know it's not the Fiat because apparently they only sold like 20 of them in the what? Q1 in the US or something like the, that. The I want us all to get this one. No, right, just so Fiat, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the you company. Hints. You're going to give them hints? You I don't think, have to give I me hints. I think we can all get this one right. I'll give you hints. What? You don't have to give me We'll hint. do it at the end, of course. Like I'll just get it wrong. Trivia. I'm fine. All right. Well, all right. I do need to catch, catch who you have the most you don't points. No, David has the most points. I'll give you a hint. It runs on gasoline. What? Actually, that's a good one. <laughs> Wait, really? No. Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. That's it's a hint. It's a huge that's what I assume. That's a massive hint. Yeah, or does it? It's the hint. Oh, my gosh. Okay. We'll be back yeah. after the break. Oh, we were still going. This episode of Waveform is supported by Shopify. If you're tinkering with an idea for a new business, whether it's the next selfie stick or your hot new take on an ergonomic keyboard, 
uh, or a must-have gadget that's so secret we can't even talk about it yet, Shopify can help you get started on the right foot. Shopify is a sales platform you can use to start a new business or help grow your existing operation. And Shopify makes it easy for mom and pop shops and thriving companies alike to connect with customers, keep track of marketing efforts, and convert site visits to sales. It's all-in-one e-commerce platform pairs seamlessly with an in-person point of sale setup so you can keep track of brick and mortar and online sales in one place. That's just one of the reasons brands like Brooklinen and Allbirds rely on Shopify. See why millions of other brands use the platform to power sales, develop their brands, and make business simple. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash waveform. So go to shopify.com slash waveform. Take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash waveform. All right, welcome back. As, as we were on our little ad break there, uh, a little Apple Insider article actually just dropped. And uh, David, it, it was on your feed, so why don't you reveal it to us the way you did literally 25 seconds ago? Okay. <laughs> so I think it's interesting. Let's pretend we're on ad break. Yeah, yeah. Reenactment. You guys are talking about a car. <laughs> Lincoln Navigator. No, Lincoln pickup truck. Lincoln pickup truck, same company. iOS 17 code hints at action button in iPhone 15 Pro models. That sounds dumb. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Action buttons are sick. Yeah. But it's also very un Apple like. I was immediately kinda. reminded of the remappable Google Assistant physical buttons that we used to have on phones. Okay. That you could remap to other stuff. Yeah. There's only a few phones that have custom remappable buttons. Uh, there's only a few phones with extra buttons at all in the at first all. place. Like yeah. Sony has a shutter button, like a camera button. You can launch the camera and take pictures with the specific dedicated yeah. camera button. But there's a few phones. Um, I want to say Asus has done it. A couple phones yeah. with an actionable, like a custom mappable Asus extra button. has done it a lot. Samsung, yes. yeah. you can remap now, right? I think so. I'm but pretty only, sure you can. It was only Bixby for a while. It might only be to Google Assistant. Though. I think it might be just to Google Assistant. There used but... to be, like the Zenfone, I think six I think it was seven. Zenfone. Yeah. They always used to have this just extra button you could do whatever you wanted with. Yeah, which is sick. It's sick. It's very Android. Yeah. On an iPhone, what would that action button do? Because right now, yeah. the only thing I can think of, Apple Watch Ultra has the, what is it called? Action button. Is an action button. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of map a few different things. You can start a workout. You can open a certain workout with that button. What would an iPhone action button be well, here's able the thing. to do? I was worried. I was like, is this only going to be for exercise, but on your phone? Like, that seems a little bit weirder. But in this article... Uh -huh. Um, it says that it might be able to do open accessibility, camera, flashlight, focus mode, magnifier, shortcuts, silent mode, translate, or voice memos. Shortcuts seems dope. Oh, they're going to be new to Shortcuts could, would be awesome. If you could map it to a very specific shortcut, that would be amazing. Siri shortcuts is the best possible case, and even then it kind of feels hacky. Because yeah. like, if I wanted to open a website, it would be like, all right, hold on, let me launch Safari, type it in, refresh. Like, it has to kind of go through a process. Yeah. Um, I if, if Apple does this, I can imagine it being neutered, and like you can only do a certain set of eight things with it. And five of them are dumb. Like change your focus <laughs> mode with one button. Yeah, it's already like it's so Work easy. Time. Like okay, the mute switch by the way on the iPhone is like one of the smartest things they've kept around because not a lot of phones do that. One Plus had the alert slider for a while, but like just that quick like they switch to mute. Yeah, yeah, it's so it that's been great. We love that. An action button I would want to be able to launch whatever app I want. Yeah. Let me just pick an app on my phone and launch it. Yeah. I don't think they're going to let us do that. Probably not. Which is a bummer. You could probably do that through shortcuts. Though. Yeah, yeah. Technically, yes. Yeah. And it would yeah. it would take like an extra second. Yeah, an extra second. But it would like the the action button on the watch, you can map through shortcuts and have it do a bunch of different oh, really? things. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So if they take that same thing and put it on the phone, I would imagine it would work similarly. I wish it didn't feel so hacky, but that is true. It does. Yeah. It does eventually pull it off. It's, there is a lot of cool stuff, but yeah, like whenever I watch Quinn do things about shortcuts, it feels insanely hacky, yeah. but it's still kind of cool. This is cool, too. It says the action button may also take over the volume up buttons duties in the camera app. It could activate the autofocus when lightly pressed, while a firm press will take a photo Fire. resembling conventional camera buttons, and a hard prolonged press will initiate video recording. I think they'll do that. That's dope, because if you That's... could just like start recording a video instantly from your lock screen, that'd yeah. be really cool. I can't imagine the half press working. That sounds... It would have to be Tough. well. It's um. So it says it says it's, it's probably a solid state button, oh, which means it's like sensor? it's a haptic button, sort of like the right. Which Don't means the Xperia it, phones have something like that. 
The Xperia has actually a has a real half shutter button. It's a real button. shutter okay. button. It has a half shutter yeah, button. Yeah, it's got a half shutter. press for autofocus and then full press to take the yeah. shot. What is yeah. it autofocusing on that it's not already? Um, it has it's it's acting like an areas. alpha camera, so it has yeah. continuous so focus. But if you move something around and you just yeah. want to double check, it and wants make to sure. do that okay, because the sensor yeah. is so big that it actually has natural depth of field now. Yeah, it just feels like most phones like are auto focusing on something, and then you have to tap to pick something else. That's so true how a half Xperia too. so a half touch of that doesn't like necessarily Sony. pick what you want. It picks what it wants. I guess the Sony experience is you can tap a certain autofocus point and then autofocus with that point with the camera. That's just acting like an alpha camera basically. Okay. So it's, it's a little more advanced. It's cool. Yeah. The iPhone, I suspect won't do all that, Yeah. <laughs> but you know, know, it'll be cool mm -hmm. to see a, an action button. Will they make it orange is the question. <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. I want it to be a certain color. Like, I hope yeah. it, from the phone. I can't wait till it's just Siri. Oh god. No, the power button Siri. They can't do that to me. They can't do that. What to if me. the power button powered the phone off? It whoa. Does, but now you have to <laughs> you have, you to, have hold. to hold power. I know, I know. Volume, I know. volume up. up. Exactly. Or volume down one of the Maybe. two. God, if it was just a, that was a bad joke, I'm sorry. Unre that would be the <laughs> worst thing ever. They went could back to do. power and then made that serial. Unremappable Siri button. That would be awful there was a major rumor that the buttons were all going to become solid state and then yeah. that rumor went away so maybe this is where that rumor started from this is that could they be... just have an extra button that is solid state so potentially it's all real buttons but this is the first haptic button yeah or like solid state button mm -hmm. and then they see how well it does and they can judge how close they are to making all the buttons haptic yeah makes sense you yeah. just let like 10 Apple leakers get a freebie off their wrong prediction that they got. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the pr the rumor score is like 75% possible, it says. So this mm. could be totally wrong. Interesting. But, you know, we don't, we kind of rarely do rumors on here, but this one seems kind of fun and interesting. So. I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into special colored buttons on phones too. So I'm kind of hoping for that. I doubt that they're going to make it orange because mm. the only reason that's orange is to be like a dive watch. True. Yeah. Make it red. Apple, please. There's, I think there's no shot. There's it's no an shot. accent Lime color. Green. Zero shot. The brand's going to have a field day with this Neon. One. Sure. <laughs> okay. Let's have a moment of silence for Twitter. Ah! <laughs> because it's no longer called Twitter, technically. Ah. Technically. <laughs> Depending on where you look. Ah. Depending on where <laughs> on the site itself you are looking. it's uh, It's been officially rebranded to X, and it's X.com, mm. and it's x's and it's x videos that's not true <laughs> um it's just x related things there's an x logo the the little bird is retired makes you wonder about all the people who bought the bird statues when they sold all that stuff <laughs> i wish Twitter i did HQ, yeah. the little birds legacy statue. um i don't know that i'm gonna call it x i'm still calling it twitter like i think when i <laughs> say it in public to a person i'm gonna i'm still gonna call it twitter i don't know how long it's gonna take to catch on probably a long time so you're saying you don't want to follow changing one of the most household brand names in yeah. like existence. This, existence. This is a head scratcher to me every time a well known and at least decent reputation brand gets killed. I'm HBO. Like, why? why? Yeah, that's <laughs> so just Max. Like everyone knew that brand. Yeah. Not that everyone used Twitter, but everyone no. knows what Twitter is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to try to start that over, but with some sort of like, I mean, it's like meta. Like we all know what facebook is and we're not calling it meta yeah but, it, but that product is called facebook yeah they at That's least true. did a, that yeah, yeah it's a it's product inside of a brand yeah. it's like alphabet for google right there's right. an umbrella company and if they just made x the like parent company which they did they did make x corporate x yeah. corp then they could keep the twitter then they name. could keep the twitter name yeah but they're just shafting it i have That's, two yeah. theories around this yeah. um two possible theories one Elon is actually trying to do what he said he's trying to do, which just which is basically to create the WeChat of. Oh, he said that already. He, yes, that's what yeah. he says, but he could oh. just be saying it. You know, I mean, that's what he's been saying forever. Whether it. <laughs> yeah, he's talked. He's talked happens. about making the X app forever. When he was making PayPal, he tried to rebrand it to X, and he got ousted. <laughs> I think he likes the letter X. Yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like SpaceX bit. and Tesla Model. SpaceX X. sounds yeah. cool, though. I'll give SpaceX. SpaceX sound cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, this they couldn't just call it don't. space. So, well, <laughs> or could, I guess. I but my other theory uh, is that he's trying to basically bankrupt the company, but in a way that doesn't look like he's trying to bankrupt the company. Because if he bankrupts it, but he has like plausible deniability that he was just trying to make it better, 
mm-hmm. then he gets out of having to pay a lot of money. So yeah, that's a hell of a. Sh- that was, <laughs> I mean, I like take. it. It's a. I don't take. think uh, he still owes like two thirds of his net worth to this company. Yeah, but I think someone like that is more motivated to prove everyone wrong. Yeah, and I agree. actually make it the everything app. Probably which is true. The complete opposite direction. I mean, of bankrupt. I think that's what he's trying to do. I think there's very, very little chance of that happening because, like, there's plenty of people who would love to own the app that controls everything in the world. Like, yeah. why wouldn't you want that? It, but yeah. that's a stretch for a website where you can just be really mean to people online in 280 <laughs> characters, and you can make a lot of money off that. Yeah. I mean, they're they're starting to roll out ads. Obviously, we talked about them doing creator payouts and then sort of adding some creator features, and that's at least progress in some direction. Um, but yeah, it's like it still says tweets all over the website, and like what's <laughs> oh. going on on Twitter? It says Twitter all over it. Still. If you go to yeah. x.com, not logged in, there's a giant button that says "Join Twitter" <laughs> next to the X logo. So there it is. I just it's, don't understand. It's, it's like. I mean, yeah. I think we can all agree it was probably like they were going to do this, and then Elon was like, "Do now, yeah," it, or well, announces it, and then everyone inside was like, "Oh, we are not ready for this." And yeah. Now they're slowly changing. By the time this episode comes out, maybe there'll only be like seven instances of Twitter still yeah. on than like the hundred there are right now. But uh, yeah. it, it's been changing a lot this week. It's just so insane that Twitter has its its own lexicon. There's, I tweeted this Twitter mm-hmm. like. DM, like Mean every tweet it's the thing you want yeah. to create a uh, quote tweeted there's um subtweeted is like a thing in culture you know yeah. like there's all of this stuff and like no single brand except for like google has been able to like make its thing a verb yeah it, uh, that's true. it's like in it's tech. so hard to do that naturally yeah. That, like, why just, like, burn away saran wrap? I mean, it was, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of other things. Sure, Band-aid, Kleenex, Q-tip. Technology. Like, yeah, yeah, but those aren't verbs. True. I Q-tipped my ear. I won't say that. I swapped right. my ear. But I you will know. say, used, I'm going to saran wrap this. True. Yeah. yeah. But Boom. It, it's like, you just burning all of this, like, naturally occurring lexicon that everyone would die to have. Exactly. It's what arguably, you, like, strive for. Arguably the most valuable part of Twitter. Yeah. Like when you talk about the most valuable brands in the world, a lot of time it's like, what is Coca-Cola other than a couple formulas and some sugar and a bunch of ads? Like the brand Coca-Cola and the mind space that it takes up in most humans, like knowing about the thing Mm -hmm. is the most valuable part of the company. Yeah. And that's true about a lot of the biggest brands, kind of like Nike, Jordan, Google. And I think if you were to argue like what's the most valuable part of the dumpster fire that is twitter and their headquarters it's probably their brand value yeah and to just nuke all of that and call it something totally new that let's be honest our parents are not going to call it x like yeah. we don't really know who's which is like what he paid that. for right? and also yeah it's like what he paid for. that's exactly that's the that's the craziest part he paid <laughs> he actual dollars for it and nuked the most valuable part of it yeah he didn't really Weird. pay for the users because, like, he did, but there's not that many people on Twitter compared to, like, a lot of other yeah, things. Yeah, there's way more people who just know about Twitter. Yeah. Like, like the Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, one of those, Kimmel, yeah. the mean tweets thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, yeah. Like, that, everyone knows what a tweet is. Yeah. It's so... Also, you go to you go to any um, newscast or sportscast or anything, Twitter doesn't pay any of these people to have their logo on the screen. They just put it on the screen That's for a, a, free. And imagine how many like companies and stuff that have billboards or signs on buildings or trucks that are going around with, with like tweets, the Twitter logo the as the their li- or Twitter no, never no just the Twitter logo that. to go oh. to their social. Oh, and yeah. now all of those are yeah. Every food null. truck in the world. That's the other funny thing. Every food truck has like an Instagram logo, a Facebook logo. A Google Plus logo <laughs> and a Twitter logo. Yeah. Now two of them are dead, and uh, that's just unfortunate. And it's just the SEO of X also like is terrible. What are you this before you type Twitter because you knew what it is? Now it's like X. Find um find uh, David Amell on X. <laughs> like what is going to show up on? It doesn't sound Google right. when David you do Amell that. X X X. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't sound great. This is the only reason why I have that, like, kind of theory that he's just trying to bankrupt it to get out of the payments. Because, like, it seems like the most illogical thing that he could possibly do. But maybe he's a genius and we're all idiots. Who knows? Or maybe it's just a bad move and he made a bad move. I think that's just it. Yeah, but I it's think such a bad move. I think, And they could go back right now. I agree. I think there's <laughs> just... Bring the bird back. 
<laughs> people stupid. agreed with him that it was a good move, I guess. Who and with him? I'm sure there are plenty of people know, who man. agree with Elon around him. I feel like well, the, and that's not just Elon. That's every billionaire. Companies. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm bummed. I'm, hmm. I'm really bummed. I r- really hope that things change in the next like couple of weeks and it oh, goes they'll back. Change. They'll change. I, I mean, it's just a it's a day by day thing. This I is just, like the fourth week we're talking about. <laughs> stuff. And whatever yeah, we're sorry. saying now, we record on Wednesdays. It could be totally different by Friday. Imagine Maybe it's Twitter gone. on Friday. It's back to Twitter <laughs> on Friday. I don't know, dude. It could be Google on Friday. You it could know, be Twitter Plus. I was I was thinking, what if what if Meta rebranded Threads to Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> well, I said they should just call it why <laughs> I, I, I made that joke actually I, I said people are always talking about X but nobody's asking why that's funny but Twitter is available now Twitter is available <laughs> if threads became Twitter it would be like it would be like the Charlotte Hornets yeah like the no, Hornets it's... went to New Orleans became the Pelicans got the Bobcats and then re-became the Hornets <laughs> yeah they should just yeah. call it T3 <laughs> <laughs> threads is T3 I'm going with that. All right. Does that make Mark Zuckerberg Michael Jordan? Uh, in the Hornets example? Yeah. He just sold, though. Jordan just sold the Hornets. Right. So what does that say about... Look at you, well, Mark. Okay. It would be funny because Mark Amazing. Zuckerberg has wanted to own Twitter for, like, ever. And if he ended up owning Twitter, just not the original Twitter, it would be really funny. So I guess... but. The thing is, as much as we all talk about Zuck and not wanting to be all using apps where Zuck has all of our data, he's kind of been the most successful at, for as much copying as they do, at social media stuff in general. There's a, I, I watched the, it was a clip from the Lex Friedman interview that he, he interviewed Zuck about, I don't know, a bunch of stuff, but there was a clip where he, he literally asked him like, okay, what do you think about what Elon is doing with Twitter? And the answer was really interesting. I'll link it in the show notes so you guys can watch it. But he it was along the lines of like, Twitter is an idea that could have a billion users. They just never had the execution and the business savvy behind it to actually get there. And there's no reason why Twitter shouldn't have a billion users. A public town square is a good idea. Like there's a lot of things there that make a lot of sense. It's just for whatever reason, Twitter was never able to execute on that. Elon's still trying to execute on that. And then there's some teasing at the end of like, would you do your own thing? And then he was like, well, I, I, I don't want to say, but, oh. you know, this is like a month before Threads launched. Oh. Mm. So we kind of all read between the lines in hindsight. But I think that's the Zuck thing is like, we'll turn this idea into a billion users. It is interesting. I read a lot of analysis about why Twitter became such a thing that it is. And apparently it's well, what a lot of people have said is that Jack Dorsey really had no idea what he wanted it to be. So he just sort of let kind of the people no on Twitter create Twitter. Hmm. And that's why it became like successful. I mean, that's why Reddit was super successful. And now they're like, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I, so Screw all that. Yeah. It, and obviously they get into like weird stuff. And like you could say that Elon also wants Twitter to just run itself. Um, obviously, you get into weird moderation issues. And that's like the biggest issue yeah. with social media overall. But yeah, I think a lot of people are saying threads, even though it seems like it has a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. They're specifically been saying they've specifically been saying like we don't really want this to be like a news and political place, and it's like they uh, have said that's that. going to become a thing. It's been weird that they're not embracing the the clear like you need the power users, you need the one percent of people who post the ninety nine percent of stuff, and a lot of that is the like fast moving like there's an earthquake right now now you all know about it before it even hits you there's news now there's things happening that's like the engine yeah, of twitter but the thing is like facebook mm-hmm. right like facebook went through all of this stuff where they everyone was like you're the arbiter of truth now and so they went through like this insane like congressional hearings and all this stuff and they they don't want to do that again right they're so terrified because threads is not even that different from facebook right the only difference that thread ha- Threads has to Facebook, basically, is that you can follow whoever you want. And Facebook did eventually add that feature, but they were too late to it. Mm-hmm. So now Threads is kind of just like Facebook 2.0, but they are really scared of being Facebook 2.0 because if they allow this kind of like political thing to take over and then there's like election interference or whatever and people like yelling at each other, 
Yeah. They really don't want that. So yeah, they're trying, Facebook, notoriously not the person you want in charge for news. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is really interesting to, to watch the types of things that the algorithms on threads incentivizes. Yeah. Because, like, you can't just, like, stop people who are being political or newsworthy from being on threads. Yeah. But you can surface other things more often mm -hmm. and that encourages that sort of behavior positive more. stuff positive reinforcement yeah so you kind of stuff I, I assume that when we see things on the home page by the way they introduced a following yeah following they finally in the most instagram way possible. yeah it's like sort of yeah. tucked away you have to know where to find it but yeah. it's there but i think they're going to be showing people the stuff they want more people to post and so i when i see the when i load up the home page on threads i'm paying attention to what types of things they're yeah. showing it's a lot of text only posts yeah it's a lot of people's reactions and actual threads happening yeah uh not so much videos i can't remember the last time i saw a video on my threads homepage. yeah so it's interesting. yeah i would like for threads to be able to replace what twitter did for me which honestly was just news aggregation was the biggest aspect of mm -hmm. twitter there was like random fun friend interactions and stuff but like the biggest aspect for me was like we drop links in the slack all the time like i do go to like the verge every day and read all their articles but i'm not on every single news website every single day so twitter is a really great news aggregator and it's great yeah. because if you're mentioning like the verge the verge posts a ton of articles but the ones that are popular that are the ones that people are interacting with on, on twitter, twitter and then popping up in my feed yeah. so like it's basically a free way of being like these are the things people are more interested mm -hmm. in. That's what maybe we should talk about right. this week. It helps us write the podcast. So sure. I would like threads to serve that role for yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. But Checks. by default, that is news. So it's not it's not like political news. I don't they think they're going to get away like, from news that much. It like yeah. has to get there eventually yeah. to even be kind of competitive with Twitter. It also needs a web app because... It needs a web app <laughs> so does. bad. Oh, my... God. Yeah. You heard I can't us... use my phone all the time to, like, find news. Yeah, you, you heard us already with we want a following tab. Thank you, kind of. Web and app is number... Please give us a web app. Please, two. please, please give us a web app. Yeah. I'll leave you with this as food for thought to think about what Threads is, what it's trying to be, mm -hmm. and what we already know Twitter to be. When you open up Facebook and go to the the box to post, you know how there's a little bit of a prompt there already? Mm -hmm. Facebook says, what's on your mind? When you open up Twitter, it says, what's happening? Mm -hmm. Question mark, exclamation mark. Right. There, that makes a difference. Question mark, exclamation mark. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> what's always happening? happening? <laughs> that's, the, that's always, for as much as we talk about like the conversations in the public town square or whatever, I always just think of like when we share tweets in the slack it's like this just happened this just mm -hmm. happened yeah. that's what tweets are right. what's happening instant what x's and, are yeah yeah and, like literally we talked about that apple insider it was like posted yeah. 30 seconds it was ago. a tweet that we found because yeah. it just happened mm -hmm. this just got found i actually found it on threads well on threads <laughs> on threads it just says start a thread oh wow so that's not a great tag. Start a conversation. Threads is start a cool talking, one, man. Start a thread. Just relax. I'm not going to check Mastodon or T2 right now. I'm just going <laughs> to leave you with those. I will say Threads has a 500 character limit, which is nice. Twitter blue people that have more than 280 characters, that's great. <laughs> Twitter needs to change the way that this works. Because when you hit show more, it brings you to a whole nother page. It does, yeah. That you, and sometimes there's only like three more words and then you have to hit back. I saw one recently that it was one more word and I was really oh disappointed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> the waste of my two seconds. <laughs> it should expand in line, obviously. Yeah. Why don't they do that? Dude, if they expanded in line, it would be amazing. Maybe I someone think, at X is working would on Would you that. buy X Blue if it did? No. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing we could do. X Blue. It's still called Twitter Blue. By the way, it, on the is. it actually is. Yeah, funny enough, yeah. if you click on the Twitter website and you inspect Element, the X logo is labeled Twitter. No, <laughs> <laughs> and that's a perfect place to end because uh, yeah. that's that's the state of it right now. <laughs> Trivia to ad break. Trivia maybe. to ad break. Trivia I like the sound break. of that. Yeah. Ba, ba, Trivia ba, question: ba, ba. What letter is X in the alphabet? What letter is X now? <laughs> Quick, all 25. right, twenty-four. Wait, really? 24, you're right. 24. Wow. Nice. Right. Okay. So we make fun of Sony all the time for their crazy, wacky no, naming schemes. Oh, no. For mm -hmm. their naming schemes. You, Everything about Sony is perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I make fun of Sony. <laughs> you, but I for love example, the Xperia 1 Mark 4. <laughs> Adam hates K pop. <laughs> <laughs> the, the headphones, WH1000XM4s. Um, 
But that's a long honored tradition with Sony. For example, the headphones that came with the first ever Walkman was called the MDR3 and was part of the H AIR series of headphones or hair. <laughs> yeah, crazy. <laughs> what year did those headphones come out with the first ever Walkman? Uh, what is the tradition? Bad naming? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, I thought there was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like the something one thousand. So it's like headphones. What does one thousand no. mean? I don't know. It's just their model. It's number. just a fat. Yeah. So Why w, is it there if all of them are a thousand? Means W H is wireless headphones. Do you know what W F is? Wireless earbuds. Nope. I don't know why it's. It's F. phonics. Nope. Phones. Nope. Well, you were closest the first time. It's true wireless. What? Yeah. True F. Wi- that's T F. T W. Yeah. No, yeah, I know. Yeah. Wait, it's just F. So why is it W F? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> it just is. So it's just an F. I just don't get why it's W F W H and then X M model like number of it is. Yeah, what is the what X-M is the one thousand? Sounds. Cool. I'm even fine with the X M. What is the one thousand for? Good. It's free press because we're talking about them. Sounds. So cool. that's the trivia question. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so basically, what year, what year did what the Walkman come out? Is the question. Basically, I know that. Really? Yeah, he did yeah, a whole episode a whole on the walk. Oh, I was hoping he wouldn't remember though. I was like three I, years ago. I hope I remember correctly, but I do remember. You want specific? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he wants exact date. Do you remember that? Mm, I know the year. He said the year. I'll get. I'll. I'll have a year. All right. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back. We got, uh, of course, some new Samsung stuff to talk about. They've dropped their new Z Fold 5, Z Flip 5, S9 tablet series, and Watch 6 series. Uh, our impressions video of the phones is up. Uh, I don't know if you guys are interested in the others as much. I'm personally very excited about the S9 Ultra tablet. It's hilarious. It's a, one of the most crazy pieces of tech I've yeah. seen in a while. You opened it this it morning, Tab and S9? we just heard you giggling from your yes. Ultra. <laughs> just yeah. feels like a monitor without a stand. Yeah, the Tab S9 Ultra. It's a 14 and a half inch, uh, $1,500, 120 hertz tablet. I feel like you did that last year with the S8 as I well. I did, and it's nuts. It's just as nuts. Yeah. It's just as crazy. <laughs> I love it. Just yeah. holding it. I'll, I'll hand it to you. You'll hold it. You'll be like, this is absurd. Okay. It's great. I'm ready. Um, But the phones, I'll just go over real quick the, the stuff that's new, because they are relatively minor it's quick and easy to summarize i'll put it that way Mm -hmm. the new fold has a new hinge it has a new brighter inside screen and it has a new snapdragon 8 gen 2 nice that is all that's new you should definitely have if you have the four uh it's so because of the new hinge the the entire form factor folds flat and gapless which is nice and that also does make it a little bit thinner flat um, I think open, it's the same, mm-hmm. I believe. It's the same size battery, same camera, same charging speed, same screen size, same aspect ratio, same resolution, same everything else. But, you know, chip, hinge, brighter inside screen. Hmm. That's it for fold. Then you have the flip, which is the same set of things. It is a new chip again, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It's the new hinge again, folds flat. And instead of the brighter inside screen, it is a bigger outside screen, that uh-huh. cover screen. It's a 3.4-inch cover screen now with literally access to any of your apps. They're basically matching what Motorola did, but it's got a little bit of a cutout around the cameras nice. instead of enveloping the cameras. So this is the Samsung way. It's a little bit safer, but you can do up to, like, t- there's 12 widgets now on the home screens. You can flip around, go through your notifications, do more stuff on the outside watch a YouTube video if you really want to. <laughs> you can do any of the stuff you'd normally do on the inside, uh, just a little more access on the outside so you don't have to open it as much. That's it. That's what's new. Um, I kind of said, and I kind of proposed this like theory in the video that Samsung is very settled on these form factors, and the more I was playing with the Fold after I've recently used the Pixel Fold a lot, I really want like a wider passport size version of what samsung's built and i don't think that they would do that in this phone i think they would just make a whole new phone yeah i think they would just make a samsung oh, galaxy z flip mini or whatever z pass they would make a new phone or something exactly mm-hmm. uh so they didn't do that so i i'm i'm using it i'm demoing it i'm remembering all the things about this phone that i like and that i don't like and that number one thing is still that it's just like a tall skinny candy bar it's weird to type on like i don't like watching youtube videos on it nearly as much as david you tweeted this morning you're using the pixel fold on the outside screen a lot me too yeah. it's one it's the best folding phone to use closed and i think that's what i sort of miss about you know this samsung phone which is state of the state of the art 
-hmm. incredible displays, very solid cameras, okay battery. Like it's it's a solid phone, but I just wish the form factor was a little different. And I don't think Samsung's gonna do that. I think they're there's an interesting comment too on Twitter. Keeping the screens the same aspect ratio for developer continuity potentially so that they can have the advantage of people continuing to make the most apps for their phones mm. maybe i don't know but that's the new samsung stuff can you use any app on the outside of the flip you can okay. and you can sort of flip a switch to enable some will look ridiculous uh like and big labs features can and should i guess are different yeah. things yeah. yeah you can literally go through the checkbox and same with motorola you can just like check the box of like let me use maps on the outside and that's actually kind of useful let me use youtube on the outside you can be a psycho cool sure so you can do whatever you want it's just some may look a little hmm. more ridiculous than others dang i think my favorite thing from unpacked was and it's not something i want to use but i just like that they brought back the classic version of the watch in the galaxy yeah. watch 6 mm. with the like actual physical turning dial i, I thought that, that was really cool on the four they didn't have it for the five because they had the watch five pro mm -hmm. which had a bezel but it didn't turn and then bringing this back i think a lot of people are pumped about that yeah and it's a little bigger screen a little thinner bezel but do we yeah, know if you can do anything with that like, yeah it's it's a ui it like it it's like still the touch digital screen, crown you can still move much. around yeah the okay. ui with it clockwise cool. scrolls down counterclockwise scrolls up that sort of thing yeah and it protects your screen which yeah, is nice. Just having that lip is nice to have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then the S9, the Galaxy Tab S9 series. S9 tablet, S9 Plus tablet, S9 Ultra. It's a 14 and a half inch tablet. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally <laughs> almost this big, just holding wow. a touch screen, 120 hertz, bright, 15 inch screen in your hands. That's crazy. It's wild. I Zach's going to snap the, it in half again. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I was looking at the, the Samsung website, and they make looking in the, their ecosystem look very good like i wonder how it would be to spend a week just living with only samsung things this was a take that i cut out of the hot takes video or i think i threw it in the intro maybe somebody said samsung's ecosystem is better than apple's ecosystem whoa better's a strong word better's a strong word I they're if also it's just as good they're just different like there's just different products. There's yeah. no washer and dryer in Apple's ecosystem. Like <laughs> there's just different things, right? Yet. <laughs> Samsung smart things enca encapsulates a bunch of stuff. There's no smart speaker yet. It's not canceled yet, technically. <laughs> there's no smart speaker <laughs> like the HomePod. Um, but I think you could live in Samsung world pretty easily. You could look in your yeah. fridge on your tablet. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You got the like nearby share stuff with the computer and the phone, and yeah, they have a lot of they do have a decent amount of proprietary stuff that works with their devices. Yeah, they got, their, like, they, got ear, they got really good earbuds. They they make laptops. You could use a Samsung Chromebook. You could have a Samsung monitor. You could have Samsung decks Windows on your Samsung. Yeah. yeah, Samsung laptops. There's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that they make that all work well. That's together. true. That's very true. So you could live in that ecosystem, Samsung phone. You wouldn't necessarily have a well. You have to use Bixby, so I don't really use voice <laughs> assistants that much. You don't anyway, really though. have to use Bixby That's though. They fair. let you use Google Assistant now, don't they? Yeah, I guess if you're if you were living in Apple world, you'd use Siri, and if you're using an if you were living in oh, Samsung if you wanted world, to fully live in that world. Yeah, 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 fully in it. If you wanted yeah. to commit, hmm. but it is an interesting <laughs> question. They of course all think about ecosystem all the time. It's just one of them is notorious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's. It's interesting to see the Samsung Flip versus Razer situation and how people respond to that overall. Yeah, I think they're the um, same price. Yeah, this is this this is a thousand dollars with the Razer a thousand dollars. I think so. The Razer Plus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it is worth noting you had to you have to download a Good Lock module to be able to run any app on the home screen or on the front screen, whereas uh, on Razer it's out of the box. Hmm. Oh, for Samsung you do? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. But they do have twelve widgets that you yeah. can do. Um, there's like a fitness widget and a clock widget and a bunch of stuff. And it looks generally pretty good. I think that it's interesting. Um, Samsung over time, because they have wanted to be sort of the Apple of Android and they have simplified things. We've talked about this a little bit with like, you know, the S23 phones are pretty much like the N the default NPC of smartphones now, of, yeah. of an Android smartphone. Like what is the absolute base looking android smartphone that's an s23 that's like the person that walks into the store and goes yeah. can i have a phone yeah <laughs> yeah even or more just, generic yeah, specifically yeah. doesn't want apple they're gonna get a samsung yeah. i can't tell you how many people are like i have a samsung 
S20 or like Samsung 23. Samsung Galaxy. Not even like Samsung. Or I have a Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Or that. A Galaxy series. A yeah. series are yeah. sound like crazy. But, I but like, yeah. I think that the reason that they're not doing the same thing as Razer with like the cameras in the screen is because even though Samsung does do a lot of like experimental stuff, like they started the whole foldable revolution, right? They now are settling into this point where they're like, we just want to play everything safe. So let's make the cover screen not go over the cameras so everyone knows exactly where the touchable areas are, yep. exactly how this is going to function. Yeah. You know, makes sense. Yeah, they'll probably run with this size display for the next like four years, and the size phone. Yeah, yeah, for a while. I do. Yeah, like you said, I really wish they would make a passport style fold because I think Samsung could knock it out the park. The candy bar for me is still too awkward to use, and yeah. it makes you want to open it more often. Whereas, like, yeah, the Pixel Fold, I'm really enjoying, I but use mostly it. closed. I mostly use it closed. <laughs> it's one of it's it's incredible. I get why Samsung would. Rather be though the phone people enjoy more when it's folded out. I don't. Do you want to be the phone that's more fun to enjoy closed, or do you want to be the phone that's more fun to enjoy doing the thing that you're paying eighteen hundred dollars yeah, for? That's fair. There's yeah. advantages to both. There's sides, different. Though. Yeah, exactly. I don't think they're be... dying to be the phone that's more fun when they're closed when they put so much effort into being fair. The folding phone. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, just the thought. battery implications. Yeah. Like. It's oh, for be, sure. It's got to be at least good to use. Yeah. Close. Yeah. yeah. Samsung also has really, really good trade ins for their own phones. Um, someone noted to me uh, today that the full, the Flip 4, uh, you can get $900 for a trade in on Flip 4. <laughs> and if you're a student, they have 10% off. So you can literally get a Flip 5 if you have a Flip 4 for basically free. You just have to pay sales tax. Solid. Which is insane. And be paying a university to be a student. Yeah, true. Yeah, then you deserve small it. detail or using your old student ID. We Base don't model. condone that. Base yeah. model university. <laughs> yeah, Base their trade ins are crazy. I'm really debating doing a flip still five. Paying like a hundred dollars for for a, yeah, a still brand good. new. Their trade ins are nuts, and it crazy. seems like if you're trading in something that folds, they give you like a very very mm -hmm. good price for it. Yeah, is that a red flag? Yeah, Gotta get those things off. Oh, Do they just? I, w I will say uh, I have a I was in um, Seattle. I was along the Pacific Northwest coast this whole last week, and I stayed with some random person from Instagram who I didn't know um, at hmm. his house. And he's amazing. He's great. Shout out to Abel. But he had a flip Gen two or Gen three. I think a Gen three, and the entire center part was cracked. You know, not in a way that like he dropped it and it cracked, but like. The crease like overuse. cracked it, overuse, and he said that that was his second, the, his second model, and that he had used his trade, um, his insurance to like oh. get a new one because it cracked the same way the first time, and he got a new one, and then it cracked the same way again. Yeah, and to be fair, that was like a, I think that was a Gen two. So hopefully the screens have gotten better now, but I have seen things about people's foldables cracking. I think Austin like always posts it about everyone that he's ever owned. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of crazy that the outrage over that has like died down so much because it used to be a really loud thing when every one thing would go think, wrong. Yeah. With I think we know it like comes with the territory now. Yeah. It's crazy. Which I think that's a good crazy. segue though. That's a good segue because our last segment on this week's show is a little bit of show and tell. We're going to talk about some piece of tech that we've used lately or that we want to share that we think is really cool. I'm just tell people about it. I'm going to go first because the segue is I have been very impressed with the Pixel Fold's durability mm -hmm. just because I, you know, there's like a, it's a notorious thing that these phones are supposed to not last very long. I, I talked about this last week on the pod, uh, poured water on the phone, took it to a beach, all these things. It still makes grinding noises when I open it and close it. <laughs> and it's fine. It's totally fine. So just shout out to the Pixel Fold. For now. I also want to talk for a quick second on Sony's new WF-1000XM5s. So they're out. Uh, there's an app now, so we get to test them. Dave's got a pair, too. Yeah. Uh, these are the earbuds that are basically designed to sound amazing and be worse at everything else that earbuds are good at. Like, they are not supposed to work out in these. You're not supposed to sweat in these. You're not supposed to... I thought to... they had an IP rating. No. They do, but, like, you wouldn't get these if there's... These are not workout headphones. Yeah. I would get they're so expensive. many other pairs of headphones other than these mm. for $300 They're like workout. the Bose headphones that are also 300 bucks. It's yeah. like, yeah. But I will say they do sound pretty good. They sound really good. And they have new processors and they have a new smaller form factor now. That's the main thing I'm happy about. 25% smaller just because, case or something. Yeah, I wouldn't 
the, the, the biggest challenge with these is they're always huge. They're mm -hmm. earbuds and they sound amazing and they have great noise cancellation, but they're always huge mm -hmm. and these are smaller and I'm happy about that. And they wireless charge on, on the, the bottom, bottom yes. instead of on like yes. the side. And so I you just that too. pop it on the charger like that. I love it. It seems like they realized that the LinkBud S, which I love, was a great like series in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And they're like, let's make them the, the, better, the better sounding version. version. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that's my show and tell. What do you guys have? Who wants to go next? next? I have the current mouse I'm using to play mm. games. This is the Pulsar X2. This is the random Frank P version, oh, which- You're gaming with a wireless mouse? Yeah. No, I've been gaming with a wireless mouse for a while. Okay. Okay. I've realized my mistakes, but I, I was, was using that crazy like $300 Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition, oh, but yeah. it was just too small for mm. my hand. And after a while, this, I have to say for 95 bucks, which is a great price for a wireless mouse, mm -hmm. it's not any more expensive to get the like, they're, they worked with two different creators. I said, this is random Frank P's, same price, cool design. It's been a great mouse so far. I'm like dominating my premiere matches in Valorant with it. So, hmm. you know, it must be pretty sick. Um, but yeah, I just like it a lot. It fits my hand really well. And I think it looks sick. Cool. Cool. Would you say it's better than a magic mouse? <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> Would you? Yes. Uh, I have one and a half things. Um, so, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Right. I'm just going to, the first thing, I'm going to like tease a studio video. Um, I have this 3D printed film oh camera. Oh my God. Uh, that uses an iPhone as a viewfinder, which is very it's cool. Nuts. Why do There's I feel a like lot you of, can't buy this? Can people buy this? You can buy this, actually. Oh. Yeah. There's wow. a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Working out the kinks, but like there's a few, um, yeah, it, there's a few tech angles to this, and that's why I'm making a studio video about it. Can I, I say what I love about it quickly? Yeah. Just looking at it. Uh huh. I love that since it's on the, it doesn't have a normal viewfinder, it still has two levels on top yes. to make sure that you're leveled when it has it's on. It has levels built into it, which is cool. That's really awesome. Uh, it's a camera obscura, so it, it doesn't have any wires in it whatsoever, wow. which is really awesome. I've been making some really crazy photos on this from various trips there's a studio video coming out about it within the next like week and a half to two weeks so you're shooting film shooting film oh yeah i was gonna ask to hear the shutter sound i can show you the shutter sound oh is there film in this no i can show you the shutter, yes. shutter sound. it's probably not quite as hold um, it up to the mic yeah do you want it to be one sec yeah we'll do one second one yeah. second bold oh i didn't cock it That's kind of nice. <laughs> that was one second. You can also do like one one twenty fifth, where it's a lot faster. You know, nice. solid clunk. Solid. Right there. It's in the lens. So yeah. anyway, was, yeah, yeah. Cool studio video coming about coming out about that in like a week and a half to two weeks. Um, the main thing I kind of want to talk about is actually software, <laughs> nice. which is exactly what happened last time when I talked about Arc Browser. Which, by the way, Arc Browser is officially out version one point so shout out yeah, to I you guys. Yeah, I can finally recommend it now. Yeah. You don't need an invite <laughs> to download a browser. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't Pick need an invite anymore. So go download it. It's the best. Um, but the main thing that I want to talk about was this app called Beeper. And Ugh. I used to write and make videos for Android Authority. And I've used, I used Android phones my basically entire life up until I started working here. And then it was sort of like on and off. I was like on an Android phone sometimes and on an iPhone sometimes. The thing that's like using an iPhone at all for any period of time will do to you, especially when you make friends who are not in the tech space, is you start gathering people in your life that force you to use iMessage and that are rude if you don't. In the United States, this happens nowhere else. I still have never in the experienced United States. this. Yeah, it's because you haven't used an iPhone for an extended period of time. Get on it's, iPhone for like three weeks. And three weeks, weeks and you'll see you people need that are nicer like, oh my friends. God. No, I agree. It sucks. <laughs> I agree. It sucks. But um, there's an app called Beeper, which the point of the app is to actually aggregate all of your messaging clients into one window, which oh. I don't actually like the idea of that. For some reason, I'm a segmented kind of person. But it, you can log in through your Apple ID and you can use iMessage on your computer and on your, on your Android phone. Hmm. And it works really well. It has basically all of the like regular iMessage features. It's got voice notes. It's got replies. It's got tap backs. Wow. So for me, it's great because I can finally like use whatever Android phone I want and not have people get <laughs> mad at me. You know, <laughs> this so, is worse than Twitter blue users. Wolf. Yeah, I know people who complain that you didn't have the iPhone. So it's, it's so dumb, um, and it's only a problem in the United States. But I've been using the Pixel Fold, so I really like it. So Beeper is very cool. I think you still have to sign up for a waitlist. 
Mm. Um, I think I tweeted about it, and the developer like gave me a code. So I'm kind of lucky. Just in that try aspect. that. Just tweet at the developer. But yeah, just like our code. Browser. Sign up for the waitlist because uh, it's actually really good. Do you know what does that? That doesn't have a waitlist. WhatsApp. Yeah. So here's the thing about it. When I logged into my Apple ID, because you have to like log into your Apple ID for it to work, mm-hmm. I got a notification on my Mac that said an unknown device in Kazakhstan has logged into your Apple ID. And was this you? So <laughs> I don't know exactly how they're making this work. It could be on some old iPhones. It could be on a physical <laughs> old Mac. It could be on a virtual Mac. I don't really know. So I, I don't. I, I just wanna, have to like, remote into your computer real quick. What I'll say is I took the privacy risk. Um, I like it, but do it at your own <laughs> risk. I need the Cardi B clip of her just being like, that's suspicious. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I've been enjoying it. So. I think it's really I'm just interesting. Kidding. You deserve to get bullied. <laughs> I'll, I'll, trying end, I'll bookend this with a uh, hot take. No, sorry. Okay. I actually prefer the context switching of different messaging apps. I do too. I use the notification shade as my unifier, but I prefer like when I get an Instagram DM, yeah, interacting like an Instagram DM, yeah, and then when I get a text into interacting like a text, that's just me. Not everybody's like that, but if yeah. you like it all in one place, there's an app that I can try. It I don't for you. want to use the the reason that Beeper exists, which is to integrate all of your messaging into one place. You just after the iMessage part. I just use it for the iMessage Fair. part. Okay. Because I can run it on a Windows computer, I can run it on mm-hmm. an Android phone. Yeah, for me that's great. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't want to like message in Slack in an in a beeper wrapper. Right, that's exactly. That's weird to me. It, yeah, it sounds like Wolf from the Office. Just everything gets put into one space, and yeah. you get sent a million different notifications. Yeah, I guess it's the opposite. But so anyway, that's that's my pick. What what about you guys? Show and tell. Okay, so. I'll let Ellis go last because his is dope. Uh, mine is <laughs> this. I'm on the 6A again just for, I don't know, reasons. Got bored. But they have a Teenage Engineering Pocket Operator app exclusive to the Pixel. That's really cool. Really? Yeah, it's really dope. So, like, yeah. Is this similar now. to the Nothing, like, beat maker thing that was Pretty also much. made by Teenage Engineering? Yeah. But it's better. Mm. So, yeah, but three, does it make two, your phone one, light up? Pixel exclusive app. No. That's a rare one. So it has video also. So you can record video and import samples and things like that. That's funny. So earlier today, before we recorded, I went into a top down room and recorded a little beat. And this is my beat. And then you can add things. Yeah. I can't and believe it has Pixel video. So you can see in my face. <laughs> oh, that's um, what, what YouTube channel am I thinking of? Mark. Oh Mystery my Guitar uh, Man. Mystery Guitar Man. Oh. Mystery Guitar Man. Bro. Well, that was it. That's my show. That's a throwback. It was fun. That is that such a throwback. I don't know what that is. Wow. Uh, shout out to Joe Penna. Old YouTube channel back in the day, Mystery Guitar Man. Just look it up and you'll you'll immediately watch that and know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. It was like I remember when he sort of like hit the scene, it almost felt like this like next level of production quality for YouTubers because people were still just sort of like iMovie yeah. ing their way through skits. And then he was like, it's not even that crazy, but it was just like it's just I have a thing. I have a thing for like when I can tell that a lot of effort was put into something, I really enjoy watching it. Yeah. And when you watch his videos, you're like, oh, this took forever to make. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Shout out. Um, my thing uh, if you, I put a, a link in Slack. I, I mean, not it. in Slack, in the show notes. Because no, not in the show notes either. In the Google Doc, <laughs> put a link in the Google Doc of uh, this thing that I got uh, because it's kind of hard to explain. Oh god, it's just a link called Ellis's thing. It's a link called Ellis's <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, but essentially, about a month oh. ago, I found a listing on eBay for a factory sealed. Roland V4 EX, which is like a 10 year old video processor that like sits on your desk and it's about the size of a shoebox. And they're easier to find in Japan if you're willing to import them, but I had never seen one factory sealed. This looks like a Red Means recording video. You should make more of these. You like my little unboxing? I like it, yeah. I was not going to unbox it. Uh, So I'm part of a Discord of people who like these sort of things. And I like dropped in the Discord. I was like, 
yo, I just got like a factory sealed one of those. And everyone was like, dude, record yourself unboxing it. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not trying to like flex on anyone, you know, but they were like, no, we want to see like what it's like in the box. What's so I'm about like? to give them this 4K. That's what, <laughs> like, that was my, lit. my favorite part yeah. of the story is you're like, I didn't want to flex on the people in the Discord well, by don't... doing a top, by like doing an unboxing. And then I was like, so you're now filming it on red and I going know. to send well, them red footage. I don't it. think they know I work here. So I think they were just expecting me to be like, with yeah, my iPhone. They definitely are um, expecting that. But this thing is really cool. And uh, I'm sure I'll talk about it more. Can you give us a quick example of what you would like to do with it or like a. Uh, I have no idea what yeah, this what is. is it nothing does. like an afterburner. Car. Also, like, this is only 10 years old. <laughs> yeah, it's only 10 years old. It looks older. Wow, yeah, it does. Um, 2013. Uh, it does a lot of different things, but if essentially you can plug a bunch of video sources into it, like four specifically, and then it has a bunch of uh, transitions and keys and wipes and uh, mm -hmm. diffusion effects built into it, and then it has like color processing um it has different like feedback channels uh but what does it do <laughs> picture like the year is like 1995 i know it's like way <laughs> well that's why i'm this. saying this looks way older than... yeah so like picture like 1995 and you have like a big stack of home movies that you recorded and you want to like put music behind it and like transition between them you would use something like this to like edit it all together without a computer but i use it to make pretty pictures. Nice. Well, this is good. This is this is a good show and tell. I think we should do this more often. Yeah. As soon as we all have something else cool to share. It's nice because like we don't always get to do the most the latest tech thing, but there's probably something everyone has that they're like, oh, I kind of like this, but we're way past the release date for it. Yeah. Or just randomly, if, if anyone has anything cool to share, we'll just yeah. do this one person show and tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be fun. With that all being said, we should answer the trivia questions. All right. That was so weird. In the unboxing video Ellis posted, he lifted the tra the thank you the lever as the music went on, and I thought my computer started making noise. <laughs> Whoa! Is there All right. Trip so trivia answers. A uh, quick correction, by the way. A couple weeks ago, I asked you guys what was the first commercially available smartphone with wireless charging. No one got it, so it doesn't affect the points at all. But I said the Nokia 920. Um, a couple people in a Discord hit me up and were like, actually, it was the Palm Pre from yeah. 2009. I saw a lot of comments about that. Yeah, but the, the Palm Pre, this is why I didn't choose it because I was debating Smartphone. it. Smartphone. The Palm Pre, you needed to have a different backing and a different charger. You had to buy those separately. It didn't come as the thing. Mm. But it was available to buy, so I'll say it was correct. You know, the different backing, was it just backing that? wireless charging could go through or it physically had the component i have no idea i think it was a yeah it was, it, was it like a moto mod wireless charger on the back i think it just put the coil in yeah it was like, like a that. completely different backing so yeah. correction yeah. on that didn't affect the scores but yeah that's the the answer to that uh first question though comes from ellis according to motor one what was the world's best-selling car of q1 2023 <laughs> Oh, you wrote it already. I think we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wow. Anyone want to read it or? Tesla Model Y. Tesla Model Y. That's not what you wrote. Tesla Model What's the Y. Timmy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Timmy. <laughs> it is the Tesla Model Y, which sold 267,000 units. If you'd asked me, I could have gotten close to that too. Because I had to do a lot of research for the best-selling cars when I was talking about the F-150 Lightning. Yeah. And I know how many Ys and 3s are sold. That's so many cars. And in a year, they add up to 1.2 million. And it's about 200,000 each per quarter. Damn. Fun fact. Wow. Right. I got to say, I rented a Model Y for one day when I was in San Diego. And I don't really understand why people like being high off the ground. <laughs> it's very much the number one thing people want. It's I crazy. Like it. yeah. I yeah, hated I like it. I felt, it felt so heavy and I don't know. So my question was, yeah. basically, what year did the MDR3 headphones from Sony come out? Three? MDR-3. Wait. Oh, yeah. Right. And this Which is, is basically what year did the Walkman come out? Right. Hmm. Also, while we're waiting, quick update on the score. Marquez with two after that correct answer. <laughs> yes. Andrew with one after that correct answer. And David in the lead still with three. 
Will he hold on to it, or will Marquez catch him? Let's if see. we all get it wrong, will we? Will the person closest get a point? How about that? Wait, that's very closest different. without going over. Oh, Wait, that. you can't do out going over a year. Why not? Sure, I can. I can do whatever I want. It's, it's very trivia. different. Mm, I think that's so much harder with a year on how long ago it was. Yeah, I would have because you're generally me. aiming probably towards. I'm closer sorry, Andrew, to Do now. you want? Do you want to sit at the? <laughs> do you want to let one of us sit at the big table for once? Touche. Touche. You're welcome. And read. <laughs> You're welcome at this table anytime. Oh, I, I said went, Okay, David and I went very. Close. I think it is the nine, the eighties, though. Wait, can you read it out? I said nineteen seventy-three. I said nineteen seventy-one. I said nineteen eighty-nine. That would give the point to David. <laughs> oh, baby! Wait, you are doing the closest. Yeah, I'm doing close. Oh, I going just over. made that up. Oh, okay. 1973 is what David said. The year was nineteen seventy-nine. So you were the closest. Okay. 79, the original Walkman. Even if we didn't go without No, no, it was, it was closest Delta. either way. I almost said 1980. That would have been close. The original Walkman came out in 1979. The very first one. Yeah. I know that we associate it with the 80s, but I figured it must have been the late 70s. Yeah, yeah I probably went to it. What well, Walkman obviously did I, I review? That came out in 1989. Oh, wait, no. That's the... I think you I'm reviewed the yellow the, one. I'm thinking of... The Nintendo Game Boy came out in 89. Yeah. 89. My bad. I thought of the wrong thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I'm not mad. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking with us for uh, a little bit of trivia, but also a whole bunch of uh, a variety of topics and some show and tell. We'll be back with you next week. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and re-X this video when you see it. See, you guys. see you guys later. <laughs> Peace. Hi. Waveformers produced by Adam Molina. We're partnered with Vox. Wow. That's what you get for making fun of me in the trivia. Wow. Or I just forgot. <laughs> I love that you made direct eye contact with Ellis <laughs> immediately after. You're like, by Adam Molina. <laughs> Waveformers produced by Adam Molina and Adam Molina. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Adam Molina's side piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Waveformers produced by Ellis. <laughs> Once you get it wrong, it's all over. Waveformer, Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. We're partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music is created by Vane Sill. I understand that's Did the data you know I'm giving that the up. The new thread zap that's blowing up on the Play Store is actually made by Meta. What? <laughs> Did you know that? What? They're the same <laughs> company that makes the Facebook app. <laughs> what?